I'm here today at Lulworth Cove and I'm going to take you on a day out and show you what there is to see. Now I'm a geologist, I both live locally and I've worked on the coast and I just thought I'd show you what makes this one of my absolute favourite spots. Because this, go this way, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> From the fossil forest to remnants of the Alps, there's a lot to see at Lulworth when you get your eye in, so stick around. A bit of context as to what Lulworth Cove is, other than a beautiful bit of water. Here behind me, we've got chalk. That's Cretaceous. That was representative of like quite deep seas with lots of algae being produced. That's what chalk is. So as we get towards like the mouth of the... Oops, put my hand over the camera. As we get towards the mouth of the cove, the rocks actually get a bit older. So the whole area is sort of like rocks have deposited like this and then they slope so you can see everything on the surface at the same time. It makes some quite amazing rock features. The first stop of the day that I'm heading for is the fossilised forest. So this is on the eastern side of Lulworth Cove with that, that way being west. So I've got a little bit of a hike up a hill to get through but we'll see what we can find. So now we've made it to this end of the cove. I am here. That way is that path. So I need to take that one in amongst the sheepses. One vaguely threatening sign about the number of steps. So here we are, and I accept it doesn't look much at the moment. So let me get down and explain it and show you how cool this is. So this is pretty cool. This that you're looking at here, the hollow is actually where a tree trunk used to be. And all this sort of concentric stuff you can see built up around it. These are what you call stromatolites. Stromatolites are the oldest living life form, dating back over 3.4 billion years. They can still be found in rare places now, but they are endangered. The mound basically comes from these microbes that stick sand and other sediment together to create what we call a microbial mat. And you can see, so these ones haven't grown around trees, but you can see this whole bobbly surface here. Each one of those is little stromatolites. They're very cool. Also, I probably should have mentioned before someone says in the comments, so technically some of these bobbly bits are thrombolites, not just stromatolites. I'm grouping them together because basically they're all like algal wats of microbial activity. So, you know, just, just know, I do know that technically some of these are thrombolites, but I cannot be bothered to distinguish every single time, so just bear with. You can really see this one, how that depression there is where the tree would have come out of, and you can see how all of this part has grown up and butted against the tree trunk. And there's some super cool examples over here as well. So this would have been a tree, and this bit would have been a tree trunk and so would this bit of and then i'm going to bring you closer because there's some structure in this one that's quite cool this one you can kind of picture how the tree would have been inclined so it's not perfectly up straight whereas like the ones up there are whereas this one you can see it's sort of slightly inclined this way so maybe the tree blew over slightly, maybe there was a, a breeze and it was sort of bending. Microbial mat has like grown onto it, even though it's slightly inclined at an angle. You can just sort of picture, like, I don't know, maybe it's even... I'm, I'm completely spitballing here, but, you know, maybe there's a wind direction at some point of this direction. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> and there's another whole one here. So this would have been a tree trunk laid down. But again, all this microbial mat stuff has built up against. They're everywhere. <laughs> so all of this, everything around me, pretty much is limestone. Other than the trees themselves, which would have been silicified or petrified in like silica minerals. The trees that would have been in here have generally been collected by fossil collectors. And I will put the correct name of it on the screen because I can never pronounce it right. But a lot of them are this particular type of conifer that has been named for the Purbex. But it was very cool, and we get a lot of them preserved in this particular layer. So, that should take you to go and see the next bit now. <laughs> Quick note, always check your overhang. So this one, not a lot of overhang. This one, you might plummet to your death. So always, always check before you go and stand on the ledge, because we, we don't need any trips by the RNLI. Fun fact while I'm here as well, is I've just found some of this stuff, which is sour fig. And you can actually eat this, 
this is like fully edible plant it's a bit salty but i suppose that's because we're near the sea but yeah this makes nice little uh, greens it's a little bit bitter but edible technically just maybe not a lot of it just seeing a lake bed preserved like this though is so cool but i am now going to head back up for the next thing actually what's left of a tree trunk here that's been sort of petrified they brought it up here just so that everyone can see it there's also some really funky pretty sparkly mineralization down here at calcite but yeah you can see all the structure of the wood this would have been the original bark that's been preserved very cool but fossilised forest aside, I'm now going to head back to the west of Lulworth to show you a little bit of why the rocks are so up on end. This is my all-time favourite spot in the Lulworth area. This is the Lulworth Crumple. Now, we're a little bit east of Lulworth Cove now, and it's where all of the rocks have squished up together. So you'll notice that you've got some sloping down, and then they sort of slope back up towards me, and then they slope down again. Now, this is like a giant concertina effect. And it's where tectonic plates are pushed together to literally buckle and fold the rocks. There's been a little bit of debate about exactly which mountain belt it was related to, but it's generally the Pyrenees slash the Alps, which is caused by the African plate colliding with the Eurasian plate. And whilst the actual mountains are over 400 miles away at their closest, we can still see the effects here. Now, it's particularly emphasised with being to work in this area, because you've got hard rock beds, then some soft rock beds in the middle, and then hard again. So those soft rock beds are able to like move and accommodate some of that movement. So this isn't a good example that you can see that the solid bit of the bed has stayed quite intact, both sides, but then the inside bit has been absolutely like mullered. Um, and it's sort of not recognizable anymore. It's, it's crumbly, it's, it has just been compressed and sheared in between the solid rock layers so, so much it's a little bit of a weaker rock that it it gets weathered out quite easily too now when i get up close to this rock it's not just boring and gray i promise there's a little bit more to it so all of this black stuff is actually solid fossils now these are all shells which would have been at the bottom of an ocean millions of years ago in the jurassic there's almost no other matrix or like mud stuff in between them it's pretty much solid fossil i'll give you a closer look look at this so like I almost can't po point out what's not fossil. Each of these little bits is tiny, tiny bits of fossil. It's absolutely nuts. I just think it is one of the most stunning places. Like it just shows that absolute force of nature and how, despite how many miles away we are, that tectonic pressure has still deformed this area. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now sadly that's all I've got time for today, so the dinosaur footprints, formation of the cove itself and the nearby incredible Durdle Door is going to have to wait. As I was mainly here for a quick coffee and the car park gets quite expensive after a certain time. Also worth noting, really cool little heritage centre here that's got a little museum about all the rocks and fossils and history of the area. So you know, if you ever end up here, there is, there is more. It's me done for the day and I'll see you next time.